hair and makeup artist Carolyn Maddox and in this video I'm going to be recreating for you two classic hair and makeup looks from the 1940s. I will be talking you through each look step by step with all tools and products mentioned somewhere in the video. In addition to these tutorials I will also be revealing some of the surprising roles cosmetic played during the Second World War and why it influenced how working women styled their hair. Finally, I'm going to be letting you in on some homespun hacks that the women did during this tough period. Since the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939, women had worked for the war effort, both on home soil and overseas. Being in fields, factories and the armed forces meant their styles needed to be collar length or above to prevent it from getting in the way of work. That being said, her styles during this period were anything but minimal. Curls, waves and rolls were an essential part of defining the decade's look. We begin this tutorial with the basic wet sets for curls. The products you will need are a good quality setting spray or cream. I am using one that is for those with curly hair, however any good setting spray will do. You may also need a spray bottle filled with water. Water will keep it damp enough without overdoing on the product. During the war, many products were hard to come by and women made do with whatever they could get. Setting spray was often created from items in the home, such as beer or sugar water. The tools you will need are a rat tail comb or smoothing brush, some sectioning clips, pink curl clips, foam rollers and a headscarf. You want to start this process by washing your hair with a good volumizing shampoo and conditioner, letting it air dry. You want to make sure the hair is about 90% dry, as this will ensure the curls will dry all the way through. Using a detangling brush, you then want to thoroughly brush your hair from top to bottom, making sure all knots are out and the hair is nice and smooth. As my hair is very fine and also fairly long, I'm going to be using foam rollers. You want to section the hair into horizontal rows going from ear to ear. With each row, divide the hair into smaller sections, again going from ear to ear. Place a small amount of cream onto the hair and use a smoothing brush to coat it evenly. Take the roller and place it halfway down the hair. Wrap the ends securely and roll it downwards. Continue to do this for the whole back section until you get to the crown area. With this top area, you want to section it out into two or three separate parts. As you can see, I have quite the full fringe. In the 1940s, fringes were always dressed off the face, so I clip it back until the very end. Hair was also generally parted to one side, so I'm making sure I do this with mine. You want to continue rolling the sections as before. Now that they are all in place, I am going to put a headscarf on and sleep in them overnight. During the war, beauty became a woman's duty and was encouraged by everyone from Vogue magazine to the British government. The Board of Trade proclaimed Keep up the spirit of the home front by presenting a neat appearance. Before I start this makeup tutorial, I take off the scarf left on from the previous night to let my hair breathe. Before we apply the makeup, we must first cleanse the skin. For this, you will need some sort of cleansing milk or cold cream. As the Second World War broke out and women started to take over men's jobs, it inevitably played havoc with their skin. Pond's cold cream was the go-to product of the decade as it was very moisturising and would remove every last bit of dirt and grime. You want to take some cream and massage it into the skin, making sure to cover the whole of the face, giving extra attention to the base of the nose and the crest of the chin. Then you want to remove the cream with a cotton pad or cold water. I did this off camera by the sink. The products you will need for this makeup look are a liquid foundation, a powder, an eyeliner pencil, a mascara, 
blush and a matte red lipstick. The tools you will need are some makeup brushes, a powder puff and a handheld mirror. You first want to take the liquid foundation and apply it to your skin using a foundation brush or your fingers. You want to make sure you apply it evenly and up into the hairline. Next, you want to take a powder and set the foundation in place with a powder puff. As we moved out of the 1930s and into the 40s, makeup was not only an accepted part of your routine, but also an essential one. Brows of the 1940s were kept groomed, shaped and often defined with a pencil. They were mostly arched or rounded, but not too wide or full. With a brown or black eye pencil, you want to carefully fill in your natural eyebrows one at a time, moving in light strokes across the brow until you get the shape and intensity you desire. Using the same pencil, you then want to carefully draw straight across the upper lash line, stopping at the outer corner, creating an eyeliner. Wartime restrictions gradually impacted everyday life, and makeup was no exception. Although makeup wasn't rationed, it did become more expensive and harder to get hold of. The next step is to coat your lashes with mascara. Press the wand against the root of the lashes and wiggle the brush through the hairs. Make sure to do this a couple of times for them to be fully coated. During the war, burned cork mixed with Vaseline was used as an alternative. When applying blush, apply it lightly on the apples of the cheeks, building up slowly into the cheekbones. Called rouge at the time, blush was used sparingly and wasn't available in many shades. Cream blush was often used to give a natural colour and was thoroughly blended into the foundation. Compressed powders were also brushed slightly onto the cheekbones to give a natural rosy look. During the war, beetroot was a popular product people used because of its staining properties. The final step of this makeup look is to apply the red lipstick. Start by filling in your bottom lip, drawing outwards and towards the corners of the mouth. Repeat this on the upper lip, making sure the cupid's bow is deep and rounded. Rub your top and bottom lip together to transfer any remaining colour. In the 1940s, red lipstick was 100% matte and came in many different colour variations. It was seen as uniform for the face, both in Britain and the USA. Red is a symbolic colour as it represents strength. Wearing red lipstick was a way of showing strength and unity in those really dark times. And there you have it, a classic 1940s makeup look. We are now going to go back to the hair and do the brush out. The tools and products you will need are a teasing or smoothing comb, a puzzle brush, some bobby pins, a good strong hairspray and a pomade. The first thing you want to do is carefully take out all the foam rollers one by one. You want to make sure you unwind them and not pull them as pulling them will create frizz. Once they are all out, you want to break up the curls with your fingers. It will look a little crazy and like poodle hair, but once you start brushing it out, it will start to calm down. Using a paddle brush, you then want to start brushing through the hair slowly and up against your hand. This will help keep it neat and also minimise the frizz. The beauty of a wet set is that because the curls are so set in place, they kind of do the work for you. As you start to pull the hair down, you will notice the curls forming at the bottom. Brushing the curls under will also ensure they fall together and into the shape in which you desire. Due to the length of my fringe, I decided to clip it back behind the ear with a bobby pin. Once you are happy with the way the hair is sitting, put some hairspray on and you're done. A more advanced style of the 1940s was the signature Victory Roll. These were large open-ended curls pinned tight against the sides or top of the head. Victory Rolls were not the easiest of hairstyles to achieve and so to help with the moulding, women would use rats to bulk it out, keeping the structure more solid and stable. Rats were made out of old stockings or taken from a woman's hairbrush. I am using a donut cut in half and sewed at either end. You can do this too or buy one that is specific to the Victory Roll hairstyle. 
The first thing you want to do is section the hair from the front of the ear aiming somewhat towards the back of the parts. Side parts are always better for victory rolls as getting it symmetrical on the middle part is extremely hard. Next we want to back comb. Back combing is a way of combing the hair which is used to create volume. It is done by repeatedly combing the hair towards the scalp causing the hair to tangle and knot up. For this technique you can either use a rat tail comb or a smoothing brush. I am using a smoothing brush. Section the hair across into smaller equal parts and back comb about halfway down the hair towards the head. This hairstyle is a direct following on from the basic wet set for curls, so you already have some curl and grip. The curls are going to allow you to shape the hair into a victory roll much easier. At this point, you want to take a little bit of pomade onto the fingers and smooth it onto the hair. Use a smoothing brush to lightly smooth over the hair to control the last remaining frizz. You want to take the rat and place it halfway down the hair, again making sure to wrap the ends in securely and roll it downwards. Take some bobby pins and pin them at either side of the roll and through the rat, grabbing some of the hair on the scalp. I do another victory roll on the right side of my head, this time incorporating my fringe. I take the back section and roll it forward using bobby pins. Finally, take some hairspray and spritz over the rolls, smoothing it over with your hands. That concludes this tutorial. You have two authentic 1940s hairstyles and one authentic makeup look. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time.